It is said that no one truly knows a nation until one has been inside its jails. A nation should not be judged by how it treats its highest citizens, but its lowest ones. Nelson Mandela Hi, my name is Annabelle and I did my senior capstone project on whether prison exacerbates the effects of mental illness. Basically, this just means that if you take an offender that is already um, diagnosed with a mental illness and you put him in jail or in prison, if putting him in that environment will make the effects of his mental illness worse. And the factors that will go into that are just his day-to-day -day life, the day-to-day -day climate of what prison life is like. And how those, um, just how those factors of everyday life make a mentally ill convict worse off. So, this includes the food that they eat, the amount of sunlight that they're getting, the amount of healthy social interaction with well people, um, the amount of positive influences that are in their life, the presence or absence of therapy, the presence or absence of the medication that they need to be well. All of these things along with others are, they all go into whether or not prison makes mental illness worse. So the first thing I did for my product was interview a few people that were really informed about the whole criminal justice climate that is happening in America today. And I asked them the question that I am trying to answer in this project was, which was whether or not prison makes the effects of mental illness worse in mentally ill convicts. So Talita and Tia, they're both very informed on the whole criminal justice climate because they have um, personal experiences or familial experiences around the prison system. Mr. Ambler was the third person I interviewed and he is the government teacher at Jamestown so he could be considered a government and current events expert. So we had a lot to say about this as well. That's the first part of my product. The second part of my product, which was the bulk of it, is a Prezi presentation that I that compiles all of my research findings, including the history of the American prison system, um, the reality of the current American prison system, um, what it's like, what life after prison is like for anyone, but especially mentally ill convicts. And finally, in my product, I propose a solution to fix the issues that I previously mentioned. Um, and this includes, and you'll see that later. The stigma that they're all evil people and shouldn't have jobs then affects them for the rest of their life. They won't be able to make the money they need to live and thus not make the money that's needed to get help for their mental illnesses. It's putting all these people in a place where they're not getting any rehabilitation. Instead, they're just there going day by day listening to orders and they're not getting the nutrients that they need and they're not getting any help. And then once they're released, if ever released, they are seen fit for society and they're just cast away. Isolation wards are terrible dehumanize anybody in isolation wards, you're never really safe because unless you belong to one of the big groups, you're going to be attacked. So you have to change your beliefs on that. The food is not particularly outstanding. You're not treated as a human being. I think all these things dehumanize and just tear people down. And only, I don't know many people who come out of prison better. There are over 2.3 million people incarcerated in the U.S. today. This is more than any other country in the world. Of these prisoners, 378,000 of them are diagnosed with a serious mental illness. The correctional measures prisons often take, such as putting convicts in isolation wards for up to years at a time, and the day-to-day -day conditions of prison, such as poor quality of food, lack of exposure to sunlight, and limited social interaction with healthy individuals, all make for a devastating environment for the mentally ill. Correctional facilities, or prisons, do not correct in criminal behavior at all. 
Instead, they worsen the effects of mental illness and make it nearly impossible to re-enter society as a healthier, more productive citizen. While the criminal responsibility of these mentally ill offenders is a whole separate question in itself, there is a better way for these people to serve their time in an environment more conducive to growth. The cross-section of criminology and psychology has always been very fascinating to me. My mother, being a psychologist, might have had some influence, as psychology was what I grew up hearing about. I showed an early interest in crime shows, which also had a great influence on my interest as well. I began thinking of all the questions I had pertaining to this topic and came, came up with something I felt passionate about prison and its effect on the mentally ill. This is how I went about choosing my research topic. From my research, I learned how much of an effect the deinstitutionalization movement really had on prison incarceration in America. The history behind how the American prison system got to be the way it is today is very rich and fascinating, and I'm so glad to have learned all that I did about it. I presented my research throughout my project, hoping to give the audience an understanding of his, this history and the current state of American prison so that they might see the rationale behind my plan to adjust the system. From completing this project, I learned better time management skills and practice working productively under the time constraints of a due date. I also got a better understanding on how to conduct good research. Prison does not correct criminal behavior. It worsens the effects of mental illness and makes it nearly impossible for convicts to re-enter society as healthy, productive individuals. So, ask yourself a question. Do correctional facilities correct mentally ill criminals, or do they make them worse off? As a solution, I am proposing a plan to allow a their chance of relapse. Additionally, there will be a mental re-evaluation conducted on every currently incarcerated person. All who test positive for serious mental illness will be sent to a facility where they will receive proper medical treatment and therapy, while still being restricted to the confines of the facility. They will remain here until the these two solutions of their will lower the likelihood of mentally ill offenders being cycled back into the system and will give them the chance to reintegrate healthily and gracefully back into society.